Check it out, a fly got stuck in my rubber mold. And I don't even really feel bad for him. Hey, what's up guys? Joe Simpson. Gonna show you how to pour some baits today. Got the GoPro in the chest. I figure I'd give you the biggest field of view so you can see everything I'm doing. Um, I usually like to start off with a pile of my, what I call mutant baits. These are baits that are kind of torn and shredded throughout the week. And then I like to remelt these and it gets me started. Gets me thinking about colors. And it's also kind of a potluck, like what am I gonna end up with? I got some red in there, I got some green. It's gonna be cool. So before you get started doing baits, you need some molds. And that's just these things here where, you know, they make different shapes and sizes of fish and stuff. Creature baits, worms, whatever you're making. You gotta have gloves. You don't wanna be touching this hot stuff with your hands because it's really hot. You wanna have some type of colorant. You could start with like a, a green or a pumpkin and kind of work your way up to different colors. But uh, I bought like eight or 10 colors right off the bat and I've been working with those. So I'm gonna try some different colors today. You wanna do reds and purples and whatnot. And then the other thing is um, you wanna have some type of glitter you know, to be able to throw in your baits so they look cool and they sparkle. I have big glitter, little glitter, ultra fine glitter, and then got some golds, some silver gold mixes, really cool stuff. So anyway, it's my little craft box. So uh, that's it. You just need some molds and a microwave. And you don't want to use your household microwave because it's not good. And before you pour um, Plastisol, if it's, if it's brand new out of the container like this, then you need to get it to over 350 degrees at least once uh, in order to pour it. Once it's been over 350 degrees, it's converted so you can use it at lower temps, 320, 330. But I usually like to pour it at around 350. Um, and I don't know much about this stuff. I don't have any like, uh, I don't have any like air removal devices or depressurizers or pressure cookers or I don't, I don't have all the fancy crap um, to do all this with. So I just do it basic. I don't worry about air bubbles. I don't worry about the inconsistencies. If something doesn't turn out right, I just throw it back in the pot, remelt it and try it again. So that's the beauty of making your own baits. So you wanna cook this stuff for about, uh, you know, two and a half, three minutes, get it melted, stir it in between, you know, as it comes along and then uh, slowly get this stuff back into a liquid state so we can make some baits. Stirring device, you can just use this kitchen butter knife. Don't worry if your wife freaks out or your husband freaks out. You can just take it inside, clean it, and do your thing. How'd you like the politically correct if your wife freaks out, if your husband freaks out? See, I'm, I'm down with it, man. I'm down. And you want to make sure all your apparatuses are clean. So like this device right here, just make sure all the edges and all the stuff's clean, free of debris. Nothing gets clogged. This is a, uh, this is my, you know, injection squirter syringe thingy. It's not very big. I could probably use a bigger one, but I'm only doing a couple at a time. So I don't want to get too carried away. Okay. See how we're starting to melt there, guys. You don't want to get your face too close to this stuff. It reeks. This is going to be a good, just a general blackberry color mold here. So I'm just going to, yeah, that's going to be a good color, I think. Got some green, some pumpkin. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. So don't worry too much about getting all the chunks and pieces off. It'll, it'll work itself out over time. And uh, it's easy to clean this container in between mixes because you just let it cool down. You want to have a safe place to set your stirring utensil. I usually just set it over here in this metal bowl and anything that doesn't turn out right, I have this little metal, the metal, this metal container and I put it in here and I lay my uh, knife on top of that as I'm doing things. So I'll put like chunks of rubber and stuff in there just to save it off to the side. Let's have another look at it. it doesn't take much. Once it gets going, it gets hot pretty quick. So we're getting there. Crucial device. This is a digital thermometer. And it'll tell you what your temperature is. You can see I'm at 298. I need to be, I'd like to be like 330, 340. 
Um, so I'm gonna let this roll a little bit higher. You'll notice that black and purple kind of take over all the other colors. So there was only some black and purple in there, but there was greens and reds, and it just seemed like the purple and black was the only thing that came through. 418, okay, good. So we're a little over four. We don't wanna burn it. You don't ever wanna take it like to five, 600 degrees and really cook it. 383, we're coming down. So what you do is you're waiting for it to cool down a little bit, just kind of stir it. I'm gonna go ahead and let her rip. And let's get that. Really fill those up, fill it up, fill it up. Push it a little extra, a little extra. Squeeze out the top. I'm gonna to go in here for a refill. I'm gonna get this creature bait nice and good. Oh yeah, there we go. A little extra on top, extra on top. And I'm gonna hit this one while we're here. I don't think that worked, but let's just see if it does. And we're gonna leave that alone. And now you just chill out. Okay guys, we're back outside. And see that sprue really sunk. So hopefully that didn't mean that my baits got screwed up. Usually wanna keep that full with a little extra juice, but I'm gonna leave that alone, not freak out too much. This one too, I think they're probably about ready. Um, I'm gonna do this one first, cause this one felt the worst. So like I say, take all these little giblets you get and drop them back in the old collection can. And I usually loosen this little extra stuff around the sprue. They call that area before the bait it get actually it actually gets poured they call it the sprue so you want to pull that out that's not terrible that's not terrible that's usable I mean it's not like right through here a little funkiness um, got some air down there near the uh, the fin so that'll probably tear pretty easily but it'll be nice action in the water and then you tear off the sprue you clean up the extra and you've got yourself a little swim bait tail or some type of little swim bait fish. That's not bad. We'll let that go. I'm gonna put that back in. And let's look at these. The thing I like about pouring baits is it's like immediate gratification. You pour these baits, I'm gonna let that sit for just another second, and you get something like right away. Whereas when you make lures, sometimes you have to wait overnight while stuff cools and uh, See how this one looks. This one looks fabulous. Look at that one. That was nice and greasy. That one looks so sweet. It's like a brown purple color. Oh, that's awesome. No problems there. Gonna pour lots of these. Nice. Throw that back in there. And let's check this guy out. Throw that back in there. All right. Got us a couple nice looking Googans. Looks like we went a little short on a couple legs. Um, just for speed, I think I'm going to go with these. I mean, there's two little appendages here that aren't great, but they're good enough. There were, I could throw these on a, on a lure and I wouldn't think the fish would care one way or the other. So I'm going to throw that sprue chunk back in there. It's pretty, oh, mm, shit's hot. It's pretty, um. pretty cool this whole process this is just the leftovers from the last time so we're gonna be getting into some of our own colors here soon it'll be a lot more cool so as you can see guys the hot rubber from the bottom just rolls out put it over into your collection cup out of that mutant batch of rubber I picked up four bandito bugs two of them don't look great but they don't look bad and then I've got one swim bait trailer for like a jackhammer or chatter bait. And then I got a couple creature bugs out of that deal. So good deal, good deal. Let's keep going. We're gonna do a little bit of plastisol. I wanna shake it up good. You don't wanna aerate it, but you wanna kinda of mix it. And I pour about a half a container full, like that. That's probably three quarters of a cup, somewhere in there. 
and let's get it rocking. Now this is going to take about three to four minutes. So I just take the mic up to three minutes and 18 seconds. I'll pull it out at a minute and a half and stir it. And I think I'm going to start with orange. And also you got to shake your colorant too because that stuff has little pieces that settle down in the bottom of it. So I'm going to take this orange and mix it up nicely. Yep, see the bubbles? Don't freak out if you see these bubbles. They kind of work out. They look bad now because this is still pretty viscous and the bubbles aren't really traveling up and out of it yet. It's starting to foam up like a beer. So don't worry too much about it at this point in the game. Just let it roll. The hotter it gets, the less bubbles you'll have here shortly. The closer you get to temperature, let's shoot it real quick. 375. Yeah, we're getting up there. See how it's getting really super runny? 388, 390. That's probably pretty good. But see how these bubbles kind of come out? Just let them work them their way out. 368. I'm going to go ahead and start adding a little color to this. I'm going to heat it with color. I gave it like a healthy little squirt. And you can kind of see it orange up there. See how it turns colors. Kind of cool. Not quite rich enough for my blood yet. A little bit more color in there. There we go. That's a nice dark orange to work from. And also at this point, I'm going to go ahead and put in some black fleck. That's a healthy little dose. That's like a teaspoonful maybe and then black flake will also darken your baits now this stuff's really piping hot so all right really fill up that sprue do another pull do creature creature happens fast and then do this one right here. All right, let that sit. Push out the extra. Okay guys, moment of truth. Let's get this stuff going. Peeling off nice, looking good. It always scares you when you first take it apart. It looks like pieces and parts are flying everywhere, but if you look at it, they're really not. Look at that, beautiful black seedy caramel colored golden beauty i don't even know what i'm saying just loving it so they always scare me sometimes they come out perfect sometimes they come out funky i never know let's see uh, still got some short legs on there i'm gonna keep those though because they're good enough the bodies are in good shape um Sorry you guys got to look at my gut the whole time. And last but not least, let's do a swim bait trailer. Oh yeah, that one looks really good. Which is weird because normally it doesn't. I don't know what it is about this bait. Check this out. I always get air in the head right there. I'm going for it guys. This one's ruined, I think. Yep, let's just do this one and get it over with. Okay, so we've just poured out the last two uh, orange baits, just to give you an idea what the clear baits look like. These little orange guys are kind of semi-translucent. Got a couple Googans. You can see like the first one came out nice and clear and translucent. This one has a little more fog to it. I think maybe heating the rubber over and over and over again kind of gives you some of that discoloration this one turned out really nice this one's good but it's not as nice as the other one it looks kind of strange and opaque but i'm sure it'll be fine 
they'll hit one, they'll hit the other, right? And then, uh, again, this is a one that had a lot of air in the, in the head, but I'll just clip it off and use it as a uh, chatterbait trailer, no problem. Looking pretty good. And again, these are the, uh, the brownish, bluish colored ones that I had. These are awesome. These are going good. Check it out, a fly got stuck in my rubber mold. And I don't even really feel bad for him. Yep, he got stuck right in the hot rubber. Big mistake. Just gonna leave him there. Yeah, he's dead. Really like this color. You gotta be careful with black though. That is emerald green, which was really light. And then I just put one drop, literally one drop of black. And that's what happened. So what happened? Let's see what we end up with over here. Put these giblets back over here. Ooh, that one came right out. Well, that's such a pretty color. Wow. Look at that tail. That one really came out nice, guys. What a good looking bait. I still get air in the head every single time, but I don't care. I'm going to just throw that in there. Put that back in. Let's see what this, this creature bait looks like. Oh, fantastic. Look at this awesome, awesome creature bait. I'm going to pour a whole run of these greens like this. These things are too good. Let's get these uh, Googans out of here. Yikes. See if we got at least one decent bait. Yeah, we got a couple. And we got a couple. They got some hair on them, some blowout, but we'll work it. Clean them up and throw them in the cold water bath. As you progress through these colors, every now and then you stumble on one you really like. So it's important to track how you got there. So I know that this was an emerald to start with, with one drop of black, two or three drops of purple, and then some red. So that one turned out really nice. I mean, really nice. Look at the colors on that. Kind of hard to see if it's not in the sun, but it's pretty. All right, guys, so a pretty good run tonight. So I'm going to break these down into different colors. Uh, these are my creature baits here, and these are all red. Now, they're a little bit sticky right now because I haven't put them in any oil or anything. So they tend to be a little tacky. But um, here's a really good-looking red that I got tonight. Uh, great colors, translucent in the legs. Now, this was kind of another, after I did everything, kind of a mutant color, but I added a bunch of pumpkin green. And that one turned out real nice. That's going to be kind of like an oil, you know, like a brown oil color. Um, it's going to be, you know, your utility style. This was one of the first ones I did. There's some good blue flake in this one. Um, and the color is, believe it or not, there's a little bit of red in there from the, the batch that I mixed. And then, of course, we have the amber with the black flake, really fine black flake in there. And then I did some emerald baits today with some gold flake, which I think look really nice. I'm not sure exactly when I'd use those, maybe on a real clear, um, you know, sunny day, something a little more finesse. But yeah, something to try. It's a lot of fun. You can see I have a lot of baits here. Um, it's all, you know, just the cost of the plastisol and my time and some of the initial startup stuff but this is a lot of fun you guys should really get into this if you want to do some of your own baits um, some of these uh, guggen style baits ended up really nice some of these legs didn't come out great but it doesn't really matter you know you can peel those off anyway and just use it as a as a kicker um, yeah and all these uh, little razor blade baits these things worked out good for some reason i get air in these i don't know what's up but i'm just going to clip the heads off and use them as trailers so pretty happy um, about ready to wrap up. I got a little bit left here in the brown. I'll show you this last one that I pulled out and I'll probably leave you with this. Tons of clamps on this one. I don't know why I just felt like it. I haven't been oiling the, uh, I haven't been oiling the form only because I'm lazy 
and I'm getting it all over the deck. My wife's probably going to yell at me. But you can hand peel these, you know, just with your your hands. Yeah, these, these turn out really good. I mean, if you look at this one here, it's still a little bit warm. I have to put it in a cool water bath. But if you look at these when they're finished, you can see a lot of gold flake. Really, really good looking uh, bait. So I'm pretty happy with these. Really like the way these creature baits come out. Um, hopefully these will be my go-tos. So put him in a cold water bath, pull this one out. You can see here, I put a little extra gold flake in these last couple. It's really coming through nicely. So uh, yeah, just little variations and differences. You never know what works on the water. And uh, yeah, you gotta try new stuff all the time. All right guys, thanks for coming along. We'll see you in a bit. Yeah.